Prince Harry poses bigger threat to King Charles and Meghan as Duke demands apology. King Charles pays emotional tribute to late Queen in first Commonwealth speech as monarch. Sophie Wessex's PDA to Charles was icebreaker at Commonwealth Day service, says expert. Netflix is humiliating Harry and risks fresh row over plans to show him dress as Nazi. Mike Tyndall reveals support from podcast listeners after opening up about Zora's miscarriage. Hello, and a very warm welcome to the channel. Before we start the video, please leave a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Prince Harry poses a greater risk to King Charles' coronation than his wife Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, because of the Duke's demand for an apology, a royal expert has claimed. Harry is reportedly seeking a private apology from his father and brother, Prince William, before making any commitment to attend the coronation on May 6. Buckingham Palace staff have been told to plan for Harry and Meghan attending the King's coronation, but an official announcement has yet to be issued. Nigel Cawthorn, author of Prince Andrew, Maxwell and the Palace, said Harry poses a greater threat to the coronation than his wife. He told Express Magazine, Meghan has, thankfully, kept her mouth shut lately. It's Harry wanting an apology that poses more of a threat to the coronation. But Charles knows he can't go around apologizing to people. That's ridiculous. It's far beneath the king to do that. Harry has previously refused to commit to being at the coronation unless King Charles and Prince William sit down and talk about the allegations he has leveled against the royal family. In an interview with ITV ahead of the publication of his memoir, Spare, Harry said the ball was in their court, but the door is always open for reconciliation. A source told The Times in February that while Harry wants an apology, the royals do not believe one is owed. Mr. Cawthorn, whose new book Going Spare will examine sibling rivalry between Charles and Prince Andrew, said if Harry attends the coronation, he is likely to bring his family with him. This includes his wife and their two children, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. He said, I would have thought Meghan will come with Harry, as well as the prince and princess. Harry might say, I'm turning my back on the monarchy, but my children are a prince and princess. Mr. Cawthorn stated that, while Harry poses the greater threat to the smooth operation of the coronation, King Charles would in no way be able to control the situation or prevent further drama. He just has to sit there with a fancy hat on his head, he jerked. He can't have spiked guards pointing at Harry and Meghan. Just by being there, Harry will draw attention away from Charles, the author said. And if he doesn't show up, he will draw attention away from Charles. I'm sure there will be photos of him cycling around Los Angeles looking carefree. Charles is in a losing situation. King Charles III gave his first Commonwealth Day speech as monarch as he paid tribute to his late mother, the Queen. During the service, Charles gave a speech as he reflected on the Queen's remarkable life and her dedication to the Commonwealth. In his speech, the King said, Commonwealth Day was an occasion of particular pride for my beloved mother, the late Queen. A treasured opportunity to celebrate our Commonwealth family, to whose service she dedicated her long and remarkable life. In succeeding Her Majesty as Commonwealth Head, I draw great strength from her example, along with everything I've learned from the extraordinary people I've met across the Commonwealth over the years. The Commonwealth has been a constant in my own life, and yet its diversity continues to amaze and inspire me, King Charles continued. Its near-limitless potential as a force for good in the world necessitates our highest ambition, and its sheer scale compels us to band together and be bold. King Charles appeared to be impatient during an appearance at the annual Commonwealth Day service with his sister-in-law Sophie stepping in to break the ice, according to a body language expert. The King, Queen Consort Camilla, Prince William and Kate Middleton were among the royals in attendance at the ceremony, which was held at Westminster where the king will be crowned in May. The royals arrived at the abbey in windy conditions and shook hands with guests before exchanging a few words and heading to their seats. During the proceedings, Sophie, who was recently named the new Duchess of Edinburgh, 
alongside husband Edward, who became Duke, appeared to jokingly shoulder bump the king. Body language expert Judy James has said the sweet moment was a telling moment between the pair, acting as an icebreaker at the formal event. She explained to the mirror, whether it was the upgrade to Duchess of Edinburgh or maybe just a response to Charles's slightly impatient-looking dithering as he waited to get on with the procession, but Sophie leant right in to give Charles a very playful shoulder-bump greeting, along with a very meaningful grin. As an icebreaker, it seemed to set the tone for the new prince and princess of Wales, who were spotted exchanging some grins that were fondly bordering on the flirtatious during the service. Judy also said that Charles had an air of impatience as he arrived at the abbey while Camilla appeared intensely nervous. What happened outside the abbey may have prompted Charles's air of impatience, she explained. Receiving jeers from the crowd from people carrying anti-monarchy banners did not faze the king, but it did appear to startle Camilla. Protesters carrying placards with the words, Not my king, had greeted the king outside the abbey. Prince Harry is being humiliated by Netflix as its hit show The Crown plans to show the Duke of Sussex dressed as a Nazi, a royal biographer has said. According to an inside source, fans can expect a recreation of the now infamous event from 2005, where Harry was seen wearing a swastika symbol at a fancy dress bash. The Crown has faced criticism in the past over claims that storylines have been exaggerated, fictionalized and are unfair on royals. Taken to Twitter, royal commentator and biographer Angela Levin said the development was humiliating for Harry. She said, So Netflix is going to feature Harry in his Nazi uniform in the next series of The Crown. They've paid him vast amounts so now they can do absolutely what they want. Humiliating. The royal commentator was referring to the multi-year deal Harry and his wife, Meghan Markle, struck with Netflix in late 2020, which has seen them release a stream of content on the site. Prince Harry found himself embroiled in scandal after the Duke rocked up at a native and colonial fancy dress party dressed as a member of Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps in 2005. Rommel was a German army officer who led Germany's Africa Corps in North Africa during World War II. The shocking incident saw Prince Harry plastered over the front page of the sun wearing a swastika symbol on his arm. The fallout from the incident forced the royal family to apologize on his behalf. An insider told the sun, it is one of the most shameful incidents in Harry's life and one that he finally addressed in December. Older generations will remember the sun's Harry the Nazi story and photo, but this past episode in Harry's life may come as news to Netflix's many younger viewers. In recent times, Harry has made claims on Netflix about racism in the UK and unconscious bias in the royal family. It's ironic that Netflix is the one bringing up this incident. Harry addressed the incident publicly in the third episode of Harry and Meghan's docuseries, which aired on Netflix last year. Looking back, Harry said the outfit was probably one of the biggest mistakes of my life. I felt so ashamed afterwards, he said. All I wanted was to make things right. Mike Tyndall has revealed the astronomical amount of supportive messages he received from his podcast listeners after opening up about his wife Zara's miscarriage. The royal appeared on this morning on Monday alongside James Haskell, with whom he hosts sports podcast The Good, The Bad and The Rugby, to talk about their show. Although the podcast is predominantly rugby-based, the duo have also touched on more serious subjects such as mental health and miscarriages. Following the birth of their eldest daughter, James and his wife Zara experienced two unexpected miscarriages. Mike revealed to presenters Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield that he received a flood of messages from podcast listeners after discussing the couple's baby loss. Take a look at what he said in the video below. When Zara and I had a baby loss when she was five months pregnant, the number of people who wrote to me and got in touch was astronomical, Mike explained. Everyone believes that having a baby is simple, but it is not. It's difficult to deal with unless people get around it, learn about it, or understand it. 